Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the first Tuesdays with Stories of 20... 20- 21, we're in the future, Mark. Oh, you're right. It's funny how everybody thought their lives would change. Hey, it's going to be a new year, but we're still losers. Come on. Oh, yeah, those people are retarded. There's the people that uh, that were like, new year, and, and they're each, I don't want to just get political right off the bat here, but <laughs> there's the people on the one side that are like, um, new year, it's going to be a May 2021, 2020 yep. kickoff. By the way, remember 2016? That was a running joke. It was the worst year because I think Trump oh. won, I guess. And then oh, yeah. like David Bowie died and Prince died yes. and my mother got fake tits. And it was a running gag that 2016 was the worst year ever. Yeah. And it's funny because during that year, I was touring with Louis. I was like, this is the best year of my life. It's not even close. Great year. I, I hate the year stuff. We do it with everything. Like People wake up and they go, Oh, I stubbed my toe on my dad's dick. It's going to be a bad day today. I'm like, well, make it a good day. Don't don't make it about the day. You just had a bad thing happen to you. And now they do it with the year. Oh, Robin yeah. Williams died. He choked on his own jizz. It's going to be a bad year. Yeah, and it's just a number. It's just a thing. Like, January is not any different than... It's why, it's why like, New Year's resolutions are kind of silly. No offense if you're doing a resolution, better yourself, blah, blah, blah. But the idea of, like, I quit drinking because of a date, you know yes. what I mean? Or I, I stopped eating meat because it was January 1st. Like, you got to hit stop eating meat because you're like, ah, I don't want to die, or whatever the fucking reason is. I mean, I'm eating meat. I don't want you to think I'm not eating meat. I'm not one of those fucking losers. But you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Pussies. But, yeah, no, I'm completely with you. It's just if you want to do something, do it. I hate the relying on. I think it just helps people. It's like, all right. It's like an OCD thing. It's the first of the year. I'll start fresh. It's a mental thing. I mean, how many times I used to be at open mics, and I'd be like, damn, there's like 50 comics here. What the hell? Oh, it's January. Right. And by February 4th, they're all committed suicide. No, I get it all the time. I mean, it's the gym. It's like there's a line out yeah. the door at the gym on January 1st and January 8th. Everybody's eating, you know, cream pies again. But I, I hate the people. And again, I, sorry for political. You can skip ahead or whatever. But... <laughs> It's not even political. It's like these conspiracy people that are like, you watch after the election, you'll never hear about COVID again. <laughs> it's going to be no COVID. And then once Biden's uh, elected, COVID, you won't even hear about it. It'll just disappear. I saw so many tweets like that. And you're like, you sound like the dumbest person on the planet. Yeah. It's just, no, no. Yeah. Oh, he won. I'm still hearing about right. COVID every day. Every fucking news is COVID this, COVID that. There's COVID in my ass. So uh, we're going to be talking about COVID long into the Biden administration. I promise you, you fucking nitwits. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I don't get any of it. They go, uh, hey, you know, once Biden wins, they won't have kids in cages. Like, nah, they're in cages. They're just in cages. It's over. Who cares? It doesn't matter who's in charge. They're all in cages. Also, you don't care about the kids in yes. cages. You don't. You don't care. This homeless baby's in the street. I, you know, my dad has fucked three kids since we started recording. You don't care. And exactly. I, I hate it. And I, the people are like, we... Obama drone striked uh, fucking your mother's ass. I'm like, you don't care. You just have a talking point. Just shut up. I completely agree. I mean, there's clits being snipped off in the Sudan or wherever the hell that is, and uh, nobody gives a shit. There's clits in the uh, in the water there. They're all over the place. It's like cigarette butts, but nobody gives a shit. But then, hey, you call this gal a skank, and she's a whore, and she's actually a slut. Now we're all fucked. Yeah, the uh, kids in cages. I, I think kids should be in cages. I can't stand them. I, fuck yes. The kids at a restaurant, I just want to <laughs> squish their little heads. They stink. And, um, I you mean, know, they're I kids. Like, what are they going to do anyway? Yeah, let them have fun in the cage. I yes. mean, Christmas, they all play in a box, box, cage. What's the difference? I played in a refrigerator box when I was 13. I mean, what what is a crib other than a cage? It's just you see the kid with the mug, ding, 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 ding hitting the rails, you know? That's all it is. That's what they should do. The kids in cages in Mexico or whatever, or Texas, wherever it is, they should give them those little, the little round discs that you shift from one side to the other. You know, the abacus. play pen, they have the little sh- you Yes, know? yes. Those toys that go whoop-de-whoop. Give them a couple toys. They're fine. Oh, yeah. 
Like if the the pediatrician had that thing with the the wire and the wood block, and you somehow that was stimulating when you were six. Yeah, well, uh, you know, my parents stimulated me by touching my clit, but those things I still see them, and I I get nauseous because I just think of doctor and anything that's like supposed to be fun while you're at the doctor just wasn't. They could have been, you know, blowing you in there, and I'm like, but I still have to go to the dentist. Wait, your doctor didn't blow you? Hey ho. Pediatrician, it's just a weird, weird gig. I don't know. I don't like the idea of uh, I'll be a doctor, but for children. That's odd to me. Really? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I like to uh, be very agreeable, but I, I think it's sweet. You get to see some hot little kid puss, you know. And uh, That's true. No, I'm, I'm kidding, but I guess the doctor <laughs> oh, me <too>. does... <laughs> The yes. doctor does feel. The doctor feels. Uh, the kids, it feels like. Well, I'm, you're of. I mean, you're ruining their day. But you know, it's very rare that there's something dramatic with a kid. You can kind of go, all right, you're all set. It, it feels like you're of service. With with older people, it just feels like they hate you. They don't agree with you. It's always like you got a lump on your tits. I don't yeah. know. It feels like kid might be more fun. Plus, you can be like, here comes the airplane, and then you you know hit their knee and their leg bounces, whatever it is. I'll give you that, but you know it'd be nice if you could do it in the middle. Like, give me twenty-five to forty-five. If you can be a kid doctor, can you be an old people doctor? I'd want the middle ages. I guess so. Yeah, the middle ages were great. That was all kinds of people in cages then. But yes, a lot of disease, famine. I mean, think dragons. about if you're an adult doctor, you got to look at those long ball bags like in Schindler's List. You know, you're looking into a, a, a old catcher's mitt of an asshole. I, I'm not, you know, a little kid. They're all adorable. They got the soft, sweet skin. Maybe there's boogers on them or, or whatever. But yeah, I can handle that. Yeah. Looking at an old bag and those those horrible, horrible tits. I, I mean, I would ah. just want to put them all down. These old ladies. That's true. Like when I was a kid, I was like, "Wow, a gyno! That's the best gig on the planet!" Oh man, being a gyno, you're knee deep in gash all day. You're getting paid to swim and snatch, but then you realize, wait a minute, you just got to look at uh, the lunch lady's clam for six hours and smell that, and get a get a you know, thermometer in there or the stirrups. I don't know what's going on. The LLC. That's what that stands for, <laughs> lunch lady clam. By the way, how about? <laughs> nice. Remember when we were kids? The gig that always see, you know, Al Bundy, you always wanted to be a shoe salesman. Like I was watching Vertigo the other day, and I, I'm I'm pointing at my Vertigo poster on the other side of this wall, uh-huh. and you great know he poster. has the the lady uh, Kim Novak. He she had some great breasts. He's got her <laughs> trying on shoes, and you see the shoe guy is like really like taking off the shoe. Right. Slipping them on, he's smelling her hoofs, the whole thing. But now I feel like that's over. You can't be mm. the shoe guy's no longer looking up the lady's skirt and feeling her heels and shit, right? That's a great point. I mean, the shoe guy. If you got a foot fetish, I mean, you're you're in the in the sweet spot. You're in the zone. You're paradise. So you're just dealing with corns and bunions all day. And you got that shoe horn. I love the horn. You know what I'm talking about? The little slide thing gets the heel in? Of course. Do I know what a shoehorn is? What am I, an (laughs) asshole? I know a shoehorn. That was one of the first Carrot Top jokes I ever saw. He had a a, a shoe taped to a a trombone. He's like, shoehorn. I was like, oh, shit. This guy's a genius. (laughs) I was 31 at the time. He's pretty good. I mean, he's got some good stuff. But um, <laughs> anyway, but that was like the gig. And if, you don't have to be like in defeat because you're, you're, you're looking up the leg. You're talking to the lady. You're touching her. It's, it's all very delicate. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. a, it's a soft touching. But I, I really true. think if you go to Sears now to buy a, a pair of, you know, clogs. Clods? What is it again? A, a clog is the Dutch or a sink. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> By the way, we're... we're that's a little um, clog is, what do you call it? Uh, uh, not a metaphor, a foreshadow of one of my big stories this week. Oh, oh, really? Okay. It's okay. going to get it's gonna get a little spicy in a few minutes, but is that what the shoe is? The wooden shoe? Is it a clog? It's a clog. A clod is like a, a hunk of mud, I think. That's a clod. Or is that so, a Clydesdale? So clog, That's a horse. I dated a Clydesdale for a couple of weeks, but... <laughs> So it's hey. it's the same word as like a drain clogging is a wooden shoe is clog. Yes, yeah, it's Weird. a Dutch word. I think Dutch. they're Dutch or German. <laughs> I think it's, 
I what? think it's Dutch. Yeah, okay. Netherlands. Todd Gack. But yeah, <laughs> it's, is that Dutch? Oh, I had something on the shoe. Yeah, Bill Hicks had a great bit about being a shoe salesman when he was like 14. It was just right. women in skirts, and he was just like, oh my God. He saw, said he saw the eyes of God, all that shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. But yeah, I think that's over now. I think Me Too put an end to the uh, the shoe guy fiddling the, the foot. I think you're right because, I mean, that's the whole Pulp Fiction thing. You know, the foot massage, I don't be tickling or nothing. That's all foot. It's very sensual. You're right. Yeah. Love a, love a good rub. Any kind of rub. I like a scalp rub, a, an arm, a hand. I'll do a hand massage. Really get Ooh. in there. and Yeah, you, rub and tug. That was like the earliest thing you could do. As a, right. as, a, as a teen was to get a little rub, and then you see how far they'll let it go. I remember giving a stomach massage to my high school what? girlfriend, and like, yeah, and then moving up, and then my my finger was like touching the the bra wire, and I was like, I'm at the wire. I can't believe oh, it. I'm I'm wire show. touching. That's a man. I love that wire touch. Uh, that wire was big. That was because it was so hard. You're like, I'm I'm onto something. Yeah, I remember at first touch, I thought I was like a doctor. I thought she had a lump, but then I kept going, and then it gets wired to lace, and all of a sudden Ooh. you're like, I'm giving a tit massage here. Oh, that was always the, I used to work at a lot of restaurants, busboy, waiter, the whole thing, and there was always the one guy who would go around massaging all the women. That was his in. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's no good anymore. You can't no. do any massaging. Those were the 90s, baby. Different time. Massage is out, but... Um, <clears throat> anyway, I, I guess we can jump in. I got a few things. One of them I teased. Uh, I've been all over the place. I know you've been traveling. Where were you for New Year's? You just flew in from where? Tampa, Florida, and it is wide open. I've had my feet up on a on a sand dune for three days. I, I'm, I'm tan. I'm gay. I'm a new man. What was the club like? Side splitter. I mean, one of my favorite clubs ever. I'm there in March, and that's the only gig. I'm like, well, that one's not getting canceled. No, no, you're going to have a blast. I mean, it's it's business as usual. I think they added more chairs. It's crazy down there. Like they are the crowds are hot. I had some hot sets. We did New Year's. We did 3 on a on a Thursday. We what? did we added a Sunday. We did No, no, no. Sorry. 2 on a Thursday, 3 on a Saturday. Wow. You're going to clean up there, fatty. It's a hot time. Sold merch. Really did up. The lady came down. We we went to Whiskey Joe's and Got Mai Tais and Pina Colades and did anal. It was great. Wow. I, I love Tampa. I miss, I'm miss. i having moments of really missing the old life because I keep being like I've gotten all spiritual and all this bullshit, and I'm really enjoying it. I keep talking about it, but there are moments we were talking about. I almost started weeping earlier. We were talking about there's this Starbucks on Broadway that I go to every day here in Astoria, and they all know my name. It's it's like cheers in there. Everyone's like, hey, Joseph. They call me Joseph because that's ah, the official whatever. But That's fun. They go, you want your tea? They're making the tea before I even get up. To I want to cry in there. They're nicer than my family's ever dreamed of being. They're all just so delightful. Well, that's and where we're at. We're just so void of, of connection that you see some strangers, and now it's like, oh, you're blowing the, the fat black lady at Starbucks for a macchiato. <laughs> I know. I, I might have talked about this before. It, it ruined a joke of mine. Before COVID, I had a new joke going about, you ever isolate so much, then you go and buy a scratch ticket, and the guy's like, good luck. And I'm like, you mean it? And I start crying. <laughs> and it was doing really well, but now that joke is no good because people are like, of course I've had that happen. It's too real. Yeah. But um, any jizz. So we were talking about restaurants and places with great service and it made me think of the cellar where they just everybody knows you and yes. i had like a moment you know when you have a a memory or a thought or a feeling where you for a moment you transform into that place and time oh yeah that's nice well it could be horrible it could be triggering you know when you, you go back to your uncle's basement but other times it could be great yeah well that's what i had a, i had a great one where it was just we're at the cellar, and, and you have to pull up extra chairs so everyone can squeeze into the circle. Yes. And, and Aaron is there, and Val, and Liz, and then all the comics. And then, you know, there's the one. How about this feeling at the cellar when there's a bunch of people hanging and some douche of a comic who sucks and shouldn't work there, and he just stinks, or she, and probably <laughs> she, and, and they walk up, and there's no room for them, and you have that feeling of like, yes. <laughs> There's no room. And then they, they have to turn away and walk to the shitty table, and you're like, woo! Oh, that, nothing I missed better. that. Nothing better than that. I love when the shit box can't hang, and it, and it wasn't your fault. You know, it was, hey, hey, you know, it's a victimless crime. Sorry, we're out of chairs, bitch. 
Yeah, yeah. And then someone's like, ah, I'm going to get going soon. And you're like, ah, you stay, ah. you stay. Hang yes. out. I got to tell you a story. Oh, yeah. Brutal. That hang is so crucial. It's it's so, because uh, it's a delicate balance. You got to have that guy. You can't have too many loud guys. You can't have too many minorities. It's got to be the right men, women, fun, gay, the whole thing. And somebody can just ruin that ecosystem. Yeah. That's, uh, what do you call that when someone comes in and flushes the deck or a parasite a host uh <laughs> korean it usually movie. is the host <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah what is that i know spoiled, what you're talking about it uh, someone spoils the apple or yeah wrenching the gears a worm in the tuna what is that uh <laughs> i come loose it worm in the tuna i've met a few ladies with that issue Oh, well, back in your gyno days. Yeah, I, I put a worm in a tuna before. Um, <laughs> all right, well, I, I got to tell this story. I, I teased it when we did the uh, the Patreon. People have been teased already. And, and by Tease. the way, join the Patreon because, uh, I mean, it is, it is high time for the Patreon people. And by the way, people were all confused. If you watch the podcast on YouTube, if that's how you get it, get on the mm. Patreon for three bucks a month. You can get it the day after it comes out on video. Exactly. I believe. Is that right? That's right, and people are always still confused. Like, I just did Rogan, and people were like, why is it on YouTube? Well, where's the? I'm getting emails all day. Where's the Rogan on? I'm like, you didn't see that whole thing with the Spotify deal? What are you, crazy? And that's how people, with the Patreon, they're like, this is the last week's episode on YouTube. Why, why, don't, why is it not the new one? You're like, the new one's on the Patreon, you come guzzling Nazi. We do this every week. Yeah, so get on the Patreon. You get it fresh, because these people, first of all, i never been a, YouTube guy, so I get my podcasts in podcast areas. So if you're getting, an, if you watch the podcast on YouTube exclusive for the first time, you're a, you're a week off with all this shit. So get on right. the Patreon for three bucks, three best deal in town, best Patreon in the biz, and now we got merch cooking. We got T Public, some of the best shirts. I didn't know if I understood the one with the uh, the red firecracker, but. Uh, Shelbo, maybe you want to explain that one to the fans at home. But either way, they're up and they look cool as shit. Oh, I didn't just get a guy. I thought it was your thing. I, I, it was a ketchup bottle. You got ketchup on it. I, I, <laughs> I thought it was a firework or a dynamite or a butt plug. I was clueless. Uh, but it looks uh, great. We'll figure it out anyways. But go get some merch. Support the uh, pod. But anyways, let me get to this uh, story that I tease. If you're on the Patreon, you've already been teased. But <clears throat> as you know, I was up in Vermont, which is just... God's country Ooh, up there. Beauty, I mean, beauty. Mountains, Lunch. rolling hills, the big lake, the whole thing. Uh, unbelievable. We went and hiked Mount Philo. Mm. That's uh, P-H-I-L-O. And I got to the hotel. We check into the hotel, and the lady, uh, kind of a sexy pregnant lady. I just Ah, bun in the oven. Yeah, be fun. But uh, anyways, I, I go, yeah, we're visiting. We're going to do some hiking. And she's like, where are you hiking? And I was like, well, to be honest, I haven't really researched it too much, but we'll find something. And then she said, uh, there's blah, blah, blah place. There's boobly boo place. And then there's Mount Philo. That one's great. And you know when someone tells you advice and the one, they react just a little differently? Yes. Yes. You got to listen for that. There's a, <laughs> and it's, it's highlighted. That's exactly right. She made a, she made a, and I was like, okay, that, that's the one. So we'll go there. I, I put it down, and I like getting advice from a nice, neutral person. You know the people mm. that are like, you got to do this. <laughs> if you don't do this, you're a piece of shit. And, and yeah. sometimes it's a friend that's just off-putting, and I never want to be that friend. Let me know if I'm that friend ever. Would you do that for me? So you don't, if you come off too excited about something and too forceful, I should let you know. Go, I might see it, I might not. You're doing that thing you hate, because I try to like, you know, Mama Santa's in Cleveland. I'm like, that's my favorite restaurant. You're going to really love it. I, yeah. I don't want to be the guy that's like, if you don't go there, you're a piece of shit. You, you, if, you don't, if you've never gone to this place, you've never been to that city, you fucking homo. I don't want to be that guy. All right. Well, if I can be honest, I don't want to hurt your anal here, but uh, oh, hit God. Just hit me with it. All right. I'm going to come clean. You're such a picky cunt with the food that sometimes <laughs> I, I lay low on your food wrecks. You tell me to go to Philo, I'll get naked, I'll do Molly, and I'll run up the mountainside and pray to Allah on the top. But food wreck, I'm like, ah, 
oh, this guy's eating Doritos and Funyuns for breakfast. I'm out. That's why it's it's so moving of a wreck. You know what I mean? Like if I tell you you got to see a movie, you got to see this movie because you know I'll, I'll I, give you the movie. I hate the thing. I hate the other thing. Sopranos stink. The wires bullshit. Your mother's gay. But this a restaurant. How I, I many rec- restaurants have I recommended in my whole life? Two well, maybe. The Cheesecake Factory. I've heard about that one from you, and and Chipotle once or twice. But yeah, that's about it. All right. Well, I mean, if you go to Santa's, that's fine. But uh, you got a point. You might you might have a point too. I stink. I'll kill myself after the show. But it's just with grub, just the grub hub. The other stuff, I'm all I'm all anal, all ears. I told you the best recommendation I ever made of a movie was my, my friend Derek, who I mention often. He had never seen One Flew the Cuckoo's Nest, and he's like, I don't know. He didn't like the cover. This is in high school. He oh. didn't like the way the cover looked, and I go, I'll tell you what. Just agree to watch this movie, and I'm willing to bet 50 bucks it'll be in your top five movies. You've got to respond honestly. You've got to be honest. Wow, that's If this that's movie's bold. not in your top five, I give you 50 bucks. Wow. And we watched it, and he said, hey, keep your 50 bucks. That's the best movie I've ever seen. Oh, well, there you go. That's like the Jay Leno move at the bar when he tried to do comedy. He said, here's 50 bucks. If I'm not funny, keep it. Same initials. Uh Uh-huh. So we go out. We go to Hike the Mountain. Say that again. Different chin. Oh, yeah. Somewhere Uh, in between his chin and my chin would... That's your sweet spot. (laughs) Right, right. Our chins are like pediatrician and elderly. You really want that middle. Right in the middle, baby. The gooey mid. Love a gooey mid. That would be a great chart. Somebody should make that merch. Jay Leno's chin, your chin. You want to be somewhere in the middle. It's like, uh, what do you call it? Zero to 60. What's zero to 60? You know, you got the bottom and then <whistles> that's what, how you measure a car speed. It gets from zero to 60 in six seconds. Yours oh, is I, a, it goes from list to Leno in eight, eight feet. Ah, uh, gotcha. I remember uh, there was a really clever ad campaign where they said, Zero to sixty and whatever sixty to zero is it? Shouldn't that be just as important? And it was about how safe the car was. Oh, I was like, that's a good campaign. I like, I like, Daddy 60, like sixty to zero. Anyway, I got to get to this story because I can already yeah. hear the Sorry. tweets being like, "List takes forever. He sucks. He his his chin is awful. His teeth are bad. His forehead's too big." And, and that's My just fault. Me. <clears throat> good forehead. Go to Philo. We hike Philo. It's beautiful. I don't even need to get into it. Just a beautiful hike. Fuck me in the ass. Then we leave Philo. There's an old general store I remember being at Ooh. with Greg Stone six years ago. I was like, we got to go check this out. Unfortunately, wow. you can't go inside because uh, COVID or whatever. So we got a slice of pizza and a sandwich. We have a great time. And then I, I love just looking at the map and finding an interesting area on the map and being like, let's go to this spot. Right. So I look on the map. In the middle of Lake Champlain, there's uh, an island called Grand Isle. There's an island in the middle of the uh, lake, which is Ooh. rare, I think. Don't you want to get on that island? That's what I'm saying. I always want to get on. I see it in the bushes, and I go, ah, we could swim, but the water's freezing. There's a shark in there or a pedophile. But you never go to the island, but I always want to. And then you, you think about fucking a girl on it. Well, here's the thing. This island has a sandbar, like a dune with a road built on it. You can drive to the island. Oh, that helps. It's a, it's a drivable island, and it's a sandbar road, evidently. So we drove right out there. We put it in the map, Grand Isle, take me there. We drive out there, and, and it's just gorgeous. The sun is low because it's winter, so the sun is kind of setting over the lake, which is spectacular. That's out the left side. We look out the right side. We have a full moon rising just over the horizon. You have oh. the sun and moon at the same height. Wow, man. This is perfect. Magical. So then we're driving up Grand Isle in Vermont, and there's a sign that says Grand Isle State Park. So we go, let's swing into the state park. We park, and it, it sun is setting, so no one's in there. We're just the only two in there. We're walking. You have that snow crunch. There's just a little... Ooh, love a crunch. Gotta love a snow crunch. We're walking in there. Then there's a trail you can go into, and there's a little sign-in sheet. that says, please sign your name and when you're going in. So we're like, oh, maybe this is a little dangerous if you have mm. to sign up. If you're missing, they want to know who's in there, I guess. Uh-huh. So I'm like, let's sign up. We'll go in. The sun's setting, but we'll be quick. And we put our names in. I have a little bit of a nervous feeling because we're in the middle of nowhere, and you got to sign in, which feels spooky to me. And yeah. you, know, you, just, you just get a spook every once in a while. You know that Sure. Feeling? Oh, I hate a spook. Or a specter. We'll add it. Uh, so wow. <laughs> I didn't. 
I I didn't mean it that way. I'm teasing. All right. <laughs> we never read it. Uh, so we we sign in, and I take two steps, and we hear another crunch crunch behind us. Uh-huh. Uh, behind crunch crunch. Bad crunch crunch. So we do a little spinaroo to look over the shoulder to investigate the crunch, and it's a squirrely looking kid, hair not unlike mine, but greasier. Then he's got mm. a beard shittier than mine with like patches in it. Uh-oh. He's got a, a patchy, scraggly beard. Bad and news. And a rifle on his shoulder. Oh, man. Is this the second rifle you've seen in a week? Same rifle. That was a ah. tease. This is full story. Oh, got it. Got it. Sorry. This is That was the rifle tease. This is the rifle insertion. Oh, my God. So I already had kind of a, 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 a elevated heartbeat. I'm like, it's late. Should we be hiking? Blah, blah, blah. I look over, and I see, you know, one of those creepy only children people with a fucking gun on his arm. And wh- how do you feel about that? I've never seen a gun in the wild outside of a cop on someone's hip, you know what I mean? Or maybe in Texas, a guy with a cowboy hat at a sandwich shop. I hate it, but I hate the whole picture. I hate the crunch crunch. I hate the Apache beard. I hate the, the greasy hair. He feels like some kind of woodsman guy who lives in a cabin. He has no cell phone. It's all bad news. This guy lives by his own rules. He's got nothing to lose. Well, so I, I start going haywire. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is a gun. Because you have the immediate thing of, like, he could just shoot us. Yes. Why, what could, we have no defense. I mean, I guess you charge with a gun. You run away with a knife. That's what Al Pacino said in that movie. Ah, that's not bad. But then you have the thing go, hey, you fucking idiot. We're in Vermont. This is how it is. He's probably hunting. You know, he didn't have much of a vest. Everyone's like, do you have an orange vest? I'm like, maybe I'm gay or just focusing on the gun. But I, I didn't see any orange. They don't want the vest. The vest is uh, that's that's a wuss move. That's like going to a skate park with helmets on. You know, oh, hey, right? I, I'm the real deal. Yeah, I don't need a vest. I hunt. I'm a man. Yeah, well, men hunt and women vest, but uh, he, <laughs> he had the gun. And then he's walking right for us. He's not smiling or saying, hey, how do you do or anything. And so, but I, I've been doing all this meditation and uh, I'm gay now. And, and so I kind of started to settle like, what are you, idiot he's he's you're in gun area you're in the woods he's right, not gonna right. shoot us what's he just walking around shooting people just relax you fucking idiot and then just at that moment we hear a new crunch and it's a car it's like a station wagon oh, pulls God. in and now i'm like what is this? is this guy gonna is this guy in cahoots is this guy gonna get murdered i don't know what the fuck's going on the station yeah. wagon pulls all the way up near us and the gun guy just gets in the back seat. It's like an Uber. What? I think it's an Uber. I don't know. But he gets in the back seat. And by the way, we, we skipped the trail. We were like, fuck the trail. Let's just get out of here. The sun's going down. There's a weirdo with a gun. There's a station wagon Uber picking up gun people. I don't like it. It was very off-putting. And then so we just walked. And like, you don't want to look back. You know when you look back and yes. the person, they, look, they go, what are you looking at? So you just kind of oh, like yeah. head down. And I'm like, should we zigzag so we don't get killed by this weirdo? <laughs> I'm I'm sensing a lot of you're not from around here, are you? That guy. And then I'm getting some deliverance vibes. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I got, you know, glasses and, you know, I'm wearing a fucking Pearl Jam T-shirt and and New Balance sneakers. So they can tell. I just have that feeling that they're going to hate us. But uh, all was well that ends well or whatever. But I had never seen... Uh, a person with a gun in the woods. I know I'm going to get a bunch of like, ah, you're a fag, fuck you, whatever. But um, there's not a lot of people walking around with rifles around here. Wait, wait. You were in the woods, though. You weren't, not, you weren't like in the general store. No. So what it was is there's a road through the park, like through the center of the park. And the road was like closed on the side. It's hard to explain. It was closed on the side we were at. So we parked on the outside. Uh-huh. And then we walked in, and then this station wagon pulled from, like, the other side. Because, you know, it's like state parks have, like, roads through them. Aha. Uh-huh. Got it. Oh, so man. the road was dividing the woods. So this kid came out of those woods, and we were about to walk into these woods. What do you say? He was 30, 25? Yeah, probably, like, 20. He looked like a oh. kid. Oh, that's even scarier. You don't know what those kids are doing. Very school shootery. Uh, yeah, as much as we bitch about TikTok and podcasts, at least we know what those kids are up to. They're doing a, a hip hop and a dance and a, and a and a trick and a move, but they're not holding a rifle. 
Yeah, I mean, the kid's probably the nicest guy in the world. He's probably out hunting, you know, turkey for his mother's birthday or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was fine. But it was just a moment of like, oh my God, because you do have that thing of like, well, you could shoot. What are we going to do? We can't do anything. Totally, totally. You're in the middle of nowhere and... I don't know, a young guy with a gun, because there's no reasoning. We're all reason, we're we're yappy, we're gift to gab, we're gay. This guy, if he doesn't like what you say, he can just hit you with the butt of the gun. You know, they do that in the movie, the guy goes right out every time. Yeah, no one ever goes, ah, oh, jeez. Yeah, speaking to the microphone, and they give you the fucking, oh. Yeah, it works every time. Same with the neck crick. Was that your point? You never see a guy like, hold on, let me try it again, when they when they snap the neck? Uh, wasn't my point, but that's hilarious. Somebody's um, got that bit. Somebody you never had see him have to redo it, you know? <laughs> right, right. It's a great bit. Somebody's got that. Somebody had the great joke. I forget who it was, but L- Louis told it to me. I forget whose bit it is. It might be Mike Donovan, the Boston guy, but how when you shoot someone with a silencer, they always die quietly in the movie, which is like one oh, of my favorite bits ever. It's that's always like, great. Psh, uh, uh. <laughs> like that's a the great silencer, observation. It doesn't silence the person. Right. But in our heads, we go with it. We go, well, it's a silencer. Of course he died quietly. <laughs> we put it together. It's every movie. No one's ever like, and they're like, ah! <laughs> they're That's like, true. It's so true. <laughs> it's like amazing bit. <laughs> That's a great point. Um, we got to give that a goog. Whoever, uh, call in if you know who wrote that one. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, all right. You want to talk yeah. about our sponsor? Speaking of speaking of uh, silence, you want to have some fun tunes in your ear. Tuesday's story is brought to you by Raycon. Ah, uh, it's a new year, it's a new me. I told you my other ear po- AirPods crapped out, so I got the Raycons. Thanks to you guys at a uh, you know Raycon, and I love these things. They they you put them in and they go Raycon and they just sound great. It's crystal clear. I wear them in bed because I don't want to wake up the lady. And I got a pod going. I got music going. I wear them all over the city. Love a Raycon. Great sound. Great fit. And they look cool as hell. I'm a fan. Uh, I I make stuff in the kitchen. I do dishes. I just put them in. So now I'm entertained while doing fun stuff around the house. Uh, they make great sound accessible to everyone. Their wireless earbuds are half the price of the other premium audio brands. And Raycons are stylish. They look great on a Zoom call, and they come in a bunch of different colors. Plus, they're super comfy and have an ear fit that is discreet and helps block out other noises. That's big. I wear them on flights. You block out some of that turbulence and the uh, flight attendant squawking. Raycon's form is unmatched. Up to six hours of playtime, water and sweat resistance, and has seamless Bluetooth pairing. You've heard us say it before, so we don't have to say it again. Get your own Raycons today! Yeah, <clears throat> here's how you do it. Raycon is offering 15% off all their products for our listeners, and here's what you've got to do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. So feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. One more time, buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. And uh, this episode is also brought to you by Native Deodorant. And I mean, I've been up in Vermont for fucking a week. I'm a native deodorant guy now. I think they legally, (laughs) if you live in Vermont for a week, you got to get native deodorant. This stuff is, first of all, it's the best stuff for the environment. We got an environmental crisis on our hands, for God's sakes. And native deodorant is here to help you. I mean, there's no aluminum whatsoever, no parabens, no talc. It's also vegan, and it's never been tested on animals, which is is good. You don't want to test things on animals it's got ingredients you know native deodorant is made with ingredients you've heard of like coconut oil and shea butter you wear deodorant every day shouldn't you be able to understand the ingredients list i think so Uh uh-huh also by the way this stuff works switching to native from an antiperspirant i almost naturally said antidepressant because that's when i see anti i just think (laughs) depressant but you won't need an antidepressant with Native deodorant, because you don't have to worry about the midday B.O. That's the reason why Native has over 16,000 five-star reviews. I mean, that's unbelievable. 
Think about how infrequently people go to give reviews. 16,000 five-star reviews. Amazing sense. You're going to love it. I use it. They sent us some a while back, and now I'm hooked on the stuff. They got lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, citrus and herbal musk. Tell them how, Mark. Woo-wee. I love it, too. Me and the gal both use it, so it's a bisexual. Big fan. Make the switch to Native today by going to nativedo.com slash stories. Or use promo code STORIES at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash stories. Or use promo code STORIES at checkout for 20% off your first order. Native deodorant. Take care of your body, folks. Woo! Nice. All right. <clears throat> well, it's good to have you, even though you were uh, hanging out with gun-toting psychos out in the, uh, the cornfields. Good to have you back, Fetty. Yeah, happy to be back. I'm sure he was a sweet kid, and that's uh, you know that's how it goes. Uh, people, uh, and by the way, I'm not one of these. Hey, like blah blah blah. You know, guns are legal. Have a have a gun. I, I just never been around one in the woods before. It's off putting. It is off putting, and then you just picture that guy's lifestyles. He he goes into his house, there's pelts everywhere that he cut. They're hanging up and drying, and I don't know. I feel like he sits in a barca lounger and hits his lady. Who knows what's going on. Yeah, it was it was kooky and spooky. So uh, hit me with some business. I mean, tell me some some Tampa shit. I mean, you're back in New York. You had a New Year's. Did you fuck on New Year's? Kiss at midnight? Blow a guy? I, what happened? I did. Well, I uh, I took a little nugget out of your playbook and uh, rented a car. Here is my whole kitten caboo, and I probably shouldn't say this because I'm already in trouble with my agency. Oh boy, for doing side gigs. Uh, but hey, it's a pandemic. You take what you can get. I gotta. I don't get. Well, you gotta kick these guys ten percent for everything. What if I got the gig? Yeah, it's a little tricky. They want that ten percent. It's tricky. It's tricky. And then I, I talked to Dave Chappelle's tour manager, and he was like laughing at me. He's like, "What are you crazy? You give these guys your money. You're a fucking shill. You're a sellout. You're a pussy." I was like, "Ah." So I just booked like thirty weird gigs off the bat, just off that. But our pal Shaw. Oh, yes, Shaw. He's in Orlando. He runs that town with an iron dick, and he said, uh, hey, I see you're coming to Tampon. Why don't you hit over to Orlando? It's a two-hour drive. Uh, fly in here. We'll do a couple shows. I'll give you a, a few clams, and then you'll drive over to Tampa that night. I said, let's do it. Flew in Orlando, rented a car. By the way, the, the line. You know, you got your, your Hertz. You got your Enterprise. You got your Dollar, your Thrifty. You name it. It's all empty, and there's one line every like around the the little snake trail they call that thing. And I was like, "Oh, that sucks for that guy, whoever's renting from them." And I'm like, "Which one is that?" Oh, it's mine. So then you get in line for 45 minutes. Brutal. Yeah. Yeah, I've had that exact experience, and you're like, "Why didn't I rent from fucking Ted's Cars?" I know. I think you just look online and go, "This one's cheap," and you just go with that one. Yeah, well, whatever brought you to that place is the same thing that brought everybody else. I know. I almost bought a, and I almost went with Enterprise, just switched it, but fuck it. I made the reservation. Plus, Enterprise probably like, we're out of cars. Yeah, so, I had that. I go to Thrifty, I get my uh, midsize, jump in that puppy. It's so fun getting the rental. You put your, uh, your auxiliary cord in, you lower the windows, you put on the shitty FM radio, and you hit the town. I love it. There's no better feeling than getting away with that car. Because I know. I'm so traumatized from years of having no credit, no credit card. I've been turned down so many times. I, I booked wrong so many times. I've just been fucked. So that feeling when you get it really feels like getting away with something. It feels like a weird heist. And then that last moment when you have the little booklet pamphlet thing they give you and you go up to the booth with the arm and they go license and pamphlet and you go, this is it. This is when they turn me back. Yep. And she goes, all right, get out of here. You come guzzler. And you, the arm goes up and you, whoo, I throw my, you know, what do you call the, the, the veil, the veil goes flying in the wind, you know, out of a movie. Is it a veil? That's Colorado. Uh, no, veils. A scarf. You always uh, see a woman throw something in the movies when they're off into the sunset. Ferris Bueller, he does that. He takes the uh, the hat and whips Maybe it. Maybe it's a hat. I throw my hat off. It's a graduation. I go out and I hit hit Orlando. Then you got that weird thing where you get to Orlando at 5 and the show's at 8. So you're like, all right, I guess I'll go to Jimmy John's and I'll walk around and then I'll listen. Then you, then your AirPods die, then your phone dies and your Raycon dies. And you're like, all right, well, I guess I'll... You're the other guy like reading plaques on the building. 
Ah, erected in 1888. <laughs> You're that guy now. Uh, 100%. I have so many of those photos, and I always laugh because I'm like, when am I ever going to be like, oh, fucking Charles Bronson lived here for six months. <laughs> I know, I know. So then I get to the venue. The show's at 8. I get to the venue at 6.15. I'm just like, hey, I'm knocking on the door. There's a guy cleaning up, you know. And he's like, all right, you, you hope you derelict, get in here. So I sit in the green room and charge my phone. But just two great shows. Got in the car, had too many beers. Got in the car, drove to uh, Tampa. You're in your hotel that night. You wake up, you're in Tampa. The lady shows up. We hit the beach. I mean, it's just, it's it's 2019 down there. It's a whole different world. You wear a mask into the 7-Eleven and a church, and you're good, you're good to go after that. Where you go, Clearwater? Yes, St. Pete. Love, oh, St. Pete. I think that might be different. I think it is. Clearwater's uh, like the rich one. Oh, is it? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I get, maybe. I don't know. I always go to Clearwater. Hulk Hogan's got a place there. He's rich, so. There you go. He says the N-word and all that, so. We did that. We got a, we got lunch on a pier overlooking the water. It's just so crazy to be in lockdown, freezing cold winter Manhattan, and then I'm on a pier drinking a pina colada, eating shrimp tacos, looking at the ocean. Yeah, no, there's these weird moments. I, I think you and I have talked about it, and um, Sarah and I have talked about it a bunch. Like, There's a bunch of weird moments where... You look back on things, and you, COVID's not even part of the memory. Like, I, I was in Shelter Island for a week. I was oh, in yeah. Booth Bay for a week. I was in Seattle for a week. And when you're in whatever house or hotel you're staying in, you're not wearing a mask, or you're hanging out in the backyard, and, and you're grilling out, or you're swimming. I have went to Jones Beach a bunch. When you're swimming in the ocean, you're not thinking about COVID. So I have all these memories, and I'm like, COVID's not even part of the memory. And eventually... Years from now, we'll be like, was that during COVID? I can't even remember. If you think about that's, it that way, it, it takes some of the teeth out of this COVID shit. That's a great point. It's almost like when you're in a bad relationship and then you get out of it and you're like, kind of like, oh, she was great. I loved her. And everybody's like, what? You were miserable the whole time. You know, she took a shit on your bed and fucked your dad. And you're like, oh, yeah. You kind of, your brain almost, it, 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 it helps you by doing that. It's saying like, ah, I'm just going to look at the, the good stuff. Yeah, well, there's a lot of um, psychology to that. There is a thing that our brain does that. It's what allows us to get into relationships again, or again. it's what allows alcoholics to go back into a bar. The, yeah, your how many, brain clears out those memories. How many times have you been hung over? You go, I'm never doing this again. I, I suck. I hate myself. I, my asshole's bleeding. I fucked my scoutmaster. And then you, 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 two days later, you're like, ah, give me that high life. Yeah, completely. So, And it's also good because it, it, it's kind of the same thing that allows you to Forgive. I mean, you have that with friends, too, where you're like, right. I fucking hate that guy. Never again. He didn't like my Mama Santa's recommendation. He didn't even go. <laughs> and then you see him two weeks later, and you go, hey, let's let's kiss on the lips. I forgot how much I love you, even though you should have got that rigatoni. Shouldn't have brought it up. But it's also interesting how uh, you don't – all we talk about is we're on our phones too much. We're at screen time. We're, we're addicted to our social media and, and dopamine and all that shit. And yet when you dream, there's rarely a phone in it. Oh, interesting. I heard this last night. Uh, someone told me, I think my nephew told me this on TikTok. He got this on TikTok. You never dream of somebody you haven't met in real life. Ooh, your, wow. brain, your brain doesn't create anybody in your dreams. That's, what, that's a fact I heard from a 12-year-old who was watching TikTok. Oh, like I've had a dream where I'm hanging out with Tom Hanks. But I've never met Tom Hanks. Or someone that exists. I yeah. see. You don't create, like, I was with a guy who was, whatever, faceless. You're always like, I was with my uncle and Michael J. Fox, and uh, things were right. a little shaky. Right, right. If you do make up a guy, you're, you're, you're in a bedroom, and he's like, he's just, his whole head is just a white blob, you know? So your brain almost can't create a new human. Right. Now, I want to make this clear. Uh -oh. I might be completely wrong about this. This is literally a 12-year-old child said, hey, I heard this thing, and now I'm saying it. So it's not, you know, not my original point. I'm so afraid of these fucks being like, what are you talking about? I dreamed of a three-headed asshole two days right. ago. Well, it's not the first time you uh, lied about it being with a child. But either way, I think he's on to something, that kid. <laughs> he's a smart little whippersnapper, this kid. I like him. So... It's Thursday, it's New Year's, and I'm in Tampa, and, uh, you know, it's just something about Florida. You land on the plane, you, you get that evil in you. You want to do a bump and put on a MAGA hat and, you know, <laughs> ride a tiger. So uh, it's just something about that, that state. It, it's something in the air there, and, you know, so 
Thursday, two shows. That club is so great. BT is great. It's so it's very it's family over there. It feels like a real mom and pop establishment. You know everybody. You get it. No one's pretentious. No one's annoying. No one's cocky. It's just very homely. I don't know if that's the right word. No, homely's bad. Homely's like ah. an ugly person. A homie, I think. Homie, homie. No, we don't play that. So <laughs> I just you know you know that you're you're sober. What what are we? Seven years now. Eight, yeah, this is my ninth January 4th in a row sober. Wow, that's impressive. Speaking of not drinking again, look at you. Yeah, I got, uh, yeah, it's exciting. AIDS. Well, as a, as a booze bag myself, you have to do that thing where you're like, all right, midnight is the big shebang. I'm drinking at eight, but I don't want to be wobbly. I want to be able to remember midnight and then some. So you have to do the pacing. Yeah, that's where I struggled. <laughs> <laughs> it There's ain't easy, Fatty. I mean, 8 p.m. start time is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good for me. I was trying to hang in there. And then we did a fun thing at midnight. They hit me with the light, and they just yelled, 10! So I'm in the middle of a bit, and I'm going, so this Uber guy was a fucking Muslim, and by 10, I go, 9, 8, and then the lady comes up with a gla- two glasses of champagne, Boom, it's uh, midnight, we drink them, the whole place goes nuts, everybody's on their feet, we kiss, they chug a beer, and that was the show, and then it all just poured out into the bar, and it was, uh, it was a great night, and I puked. Ah, oh, that's fun. <clears throat> I love, uh, love a fun New Year's. I, it's so hard to get New Year's right in comedy. I've done it so is. many where it's like, we're early, we're late, uh, you know, they hand out noisemakers before... <laughs> I, yes. It's just such a, a mess. I, I always think it would be best to just end the show at 11.30. Yes. And then the comedian comes off. And then I think I did it once like that. And then the comedians come back. I think Ann Arbor, I did it. I we The, the show ends. And then you go, we'll come back. And then the host, middle, and headliner come back up and count down there. Right. That way it's not this thing of like, so you have to time your bits. So you're like, and then the bus tire went yes. flat. Yes, yes. And exactly. she blew me, Ta- you know, whatever. Right, right, yeah. It, it's so true, but it's also a weird choice to celebrate New Year at a show. But hey, it's weird at a comedy show, but hey, I'm glad they came out to eat his anal. But uh, just fun night, and boy, was I hurt the next day. It sucks because it's such a weird tradition when you think about it because you're starting the new year, this big beginning everybody's talking about. You start it with the worst day of your life, yakking in a hotel room. Yeah, we always talk about that. That's one of the nice things about sobriety because January 1st, you go out. I'm at Target with my nephew trying to get him a new dildo, and it's like we're the only ones there. I mean, there was only one register open at Target. It was like the whole place was open yeah. uh, because everyone's all hung over and zombie-like. So it's a, it's a nice time. I, I mean, I quit drinking on the 28th. Everyone's like, how'd you do it right before New Year's? And I'm like, it was perfect because I quit drinking in Philadelphia, and three days into my sobriety, we're driving home at 1.30 a.m. in Philadelphia, and it's like... People beating each other with sticks, you know, they're <laughs> throwing, right. you know, squirrels at each other and people are, you know, crashed and shitting on their pants or whatever. So, well, is yeah, New, New Year's, Year's hard? Uh, it's got to be tough to be dry on New Year's night and everybody's just getting after it. And then in the morning you get payback. You're like, ah, look at you, queefs. I'm, I'm feeling gravy. Yeah, exactly. And during the night you're like, oh, this is going to be great. I'll, I'll go to bed at 1210. And, and also, I always hated New Year's because. That's when everybody else drank like I did all the other nights. Ah, it's like amateur hour. Like, Woo! <laughs> I'm like, well, that was two nights ago and three nights ago and four nights ago for me, you know? Right, right. Yeah, good point. And also, it, the planning is a nightmare. You know, it's so built up. We do this every year where we go, we're going to go to this rooftop, then we're going to go to a, a donkey show, and then we're going to do some uh, molly and, you know, go down on each other. And it, it just gets ruined because you're like, why don't we just take it easy and, and hang out and drink and enjoy each other and then do the, the countdown, the ball drop. But you, you build it up too much, and then two couples start fighting at 9 p.m. and you lose them, and then somebody pukes at 10, you lose them. It, it never works. That's how I've always felt about New Year's. I started taking it off a few years ago and just going easy. It's a nice, yeah, the pressure. It always felt like the pressure to be like the biggest night of your life. 
So yeah, uh, what was what was great was the uh, and then I'll I'll toss it back to you was those Caroline's nights because you had a show there was some structure to it you had a show you're hanging out with comics you do a show you get paid then you get a free pass to the Times Square thing where you can come and go these rubes have been sitting out there for ten hours shitting in their own soup and freezing to death and we could come and go see the ball drop and leave yeah that's really all you ever want in life is the pass to get the best version of a good thing. There you go. I mean, that's all show business is. You want to be right. Henry Hill walking through the kitchen. Exactly. Well said there, sister. And uh, so often we're not. So often we're the one making the fries in the kitchen, but, you know. Sure. Um, well, those, those titties aren't retarded. Speaking of making things happen, oh, this episode geez. is also brought to you by Hawthorne, which, as you know, uh, you know, Mark, and maybe the audience knows, this is my new favorite business i love oh, these yeah. these folks have you taken the test yet i haven't i, I can't find the email i suck god damn i, you I gotta, gotta do, do it. it this is what you do folks you go to hawthorne.co and you go and you take this little test you plug in which is fun just taking a test it's fun answering questions then they recommend the products to you i didn't want to do it i was like this sounds silly but whatever they're gonna send us some stuff I did it. You start the quiz. It's very easy. It's very quick. And they recommended all this stuff. And I said, sure, just ship it to me. This stuff is killer. It smells amazing. My wife's using it. She smells great. And it's just awesome. You want to take better care of yourself. It's the new year. They got moisturizer, shampoo, soap, everything. It's really great. They test the, take the risk out of it by giving you free shipping on your order and returns if you don't like it. If you don't like their products, they'll retailer them based on your feedback so you get something you love. This is one of those new futuristic companies. They're all about you. They make great stuff. I really love it. They ask me things like, how do you like to spend a night out? Do you prefer city life or country life? They really get a good feel for who you are and what you like, and that makes them a great company. And the stuff really is great. I'm using it every day. Tell them how to get it, Marcus. Man, you've, you've, I haven't seen this riled up about anything since, uh, you know... R. Kelly. But uh, I'm going to get it. Do what I did. Take the Hawthorne quiz today and get started on your personalized self-care routine by going to hawthorne.co and use promo code TUESDAYS to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot co, C-O, promo code TUESDAYS, plural, hawthorne.co, promo code TUESDAYS. Get on it, folks, and I gotta, I'm doing it today. I That's guarantee you'll guarantee you'll like this stuff uh, for sure. And I gotta tell you, I got a bit of a a crazy one here, a kooky one. It <clears> made I don't want to build it up, but I need some good smelling stuff because last night I'm here. It's Sunday. I was up at my parents' house for one week. Then I was in uh, Burlington for five days. Then went back to my parents' house to bring in the new year. Stayed for New Year's Day to watch the college football games, which was fun. And then finally came back on a Saturday, which is there anything better? I don't even know if you've ever experienced this. Coming back on a Saturday is so nice because, you know, when mm. you're gone for a long time, you come back on a Sunday and you have that thing of like tomorrow. I got to I got to fucking right. get, I got to re-register for school. I got to paint the walls. I got to do a podcast. Nice to come back Good on point. a Saturday because you can dip your toes in, get a couple emails, but it's still Saturday and then Sunday to kind of chill. So it was quite lovely. That is nice, and there's no traffic. Exactly. So Sunday afternoon, we hang out. I'm watching football. Sarah's doing whatever women do when they're alone. And <laughs> I think knit, cook. Maybe, yeah. Ni- yeah, I think she did both of those things. Yeah, pillow fight so, alone. Uh, <laughs> so I'm sitting here. It's Sunday evening. We have the office downstairs, and she goes, I'm going to go work downstairs, and I'm like, great, I'll watch some football. She comes back five minutes later, and I just hear joe which she never calls me joe you know like no, normally it's like hey fuck face bad teeth loose N-word. asshole yeah right. exactly <laughs> right. so when you hear that name i mean how often does your girlfriend call you mark very rarely it's like when your mom says your full name you're like uh-oh she must have found my uh porn exactly it sounds weird even hearing it so she's like she opens the door and it's like joe and then oh, I'm like, God. oh, my God, are there nudes of her cousin down there? Did she find my dildo? Like, w- what is this? Yeah. There's that long pause, and she's like, I think we got a problem here. Like, it was oh. like it was like Hanks in Apollo 13. 
And I'm like, what is it? She's like, we have a serious situation downstairs. You got to get down here. What is like, so vague? She's like, put on shoes, get a mask. A I'm mask. Like, I'm like, what What the fuck? And she's like, we got a serious plumbing problem. Ugh. And I'm like, oh, my God. And earlier, I was in our upstairs bathroom, and while I'm sitting there taking a big shit, I hear, like, water. You know, in New York, you can just hear everybody's plumbing. Oh, yeah. So I hear water from upstairs, and all of a sudden, I hear a sink gurgle. Like a Ooh. Boop, boop. Hate a sink gurgle. Not a good gurgle. That's a bad gurgle. So I go, all right, it's just a gurg, nothing crazy, but something feels a little off. Give it a gurg. Earlier, I was downstairs, and I used the downstairs bathroom for a minute. I just peed, flushed the toilet. When I picked up the toilet, the the bottom part of the seat was soaking wet, and there was no water in the toilet bowl. So I'm like, interesting. This is fishy. Yes. It, like, it felt like all the water sprayed up onto the bowl. I was like, something's a little awry here. Kooky. So I put on my shoes. I go downstairs, and as soon as I leave my apartment, it smells a little low tidy. we'll say. Uh, I got gotcha. you. I get downstairs. It's a basement apartment. There's a puddle all the way and little shit pieces and boogers uh, and, like, uh, cigarette butts. And I'm like, oh, this is bad. And she's like, that ain't, that's nothing. Uh-oh. And so that's I'm nothing. like, half an inch of water is nothing? Walk into our apartment, across the rug, into the downstairs bathroom. Somehow, the toilet's all, it's all pipes, Jerry. The Uh-oh. pipes got backed up. Our shits exploded up out of the shower drain. Like, it blew the top off the shower drain. I, I wish I could have seen the sight. There was shit. Like human shit, piles, logs, diarrhea, little fucking poopsicles, cocoa puffs, all over the shower. It was like a, a, a Tarantino movie, but brown instead of red. It was crazy, uh, like a mushroom cloud of dumps, fresh dumps. Wow, what the hell happened? Is this from the spinach and the chipotle and the silent re? I, I don't think it's me. I think it's the whole building. We hadn't been home in 10 days. Ah, so, good point. But we had both just taken fresh shits, like one on top of the other, like little classic battle shit. She's like, I just took a shit. And I'm like, I got to take a shit. <laughs> and we took two shits and flushed. And I think they went straight down the pipe and up out of the shower. And there wow. was shit on the, on the walls, covering the floor. I mean, it blew the top off the drain. I've never even heard of this before. Uh, this is like something out of Saw. I mean, I almost, oh, you should have saw it. Uh, I almost threw up. I was gagging, and I had the mask on because this, not for COVID, but for smell. Sure. And I'm just lighting matches like like fucking Donald Sutherland in Backdraft. I, I'm trying to <laughs> get rid of the smell. I'm lighting incense on fire. We had to call the landlord, and this is where people are like, you're an asshole if you rent. You got to own. It's throwing money away if you rent. But this is where renting is good. I call yes. the landlord. It's Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. He's got one eye open. He's like, I'm like, we got a serious, serious problem. He's like, I'll, I'll come over there. And yeah, I had to wait outside the door and be like, stop. Whatever you're thinking, it's worse. And I'm like, I, I feel so embarrassed and ashamed. I'm like, our bowel movements are like all over ah. the floor. Like you have to warn them. And yeah. now the feeling of someone else seeing your shit, it's like so intimate. So intimate, it's violating. It's it's the same with like a lady tampon. You know, I think that's very private. I I agree, but I'm like a tampon for me is just blood. So it could be a pricked finger or or you know just a whatever a, a murder or a child rape or something. But this is like <laughs> the seeds and rice in there, just oh. horrific. And this poor guy has to clean it. I'm like ah. I don't know what to tell you. Like, the shit burst, and he calls a plumber, and they're like, it'll be there in three hours. Literally, that's not even an exaggeration. They're like, it'll be there in three hours. And I'm well, like, that's pretty quick for a plumber. I guess so. It's an emergency plumber. But three hours. I'm like, I could go to a Springsteen show. I could watch Braveheart again. <laughs> three right, hours right. to have shit all over your house. So this is where it's nice to rent. We sat in the living room watching the Bee Gees dock while he scooped our shit off of our couch. They and- watch the Bee Gees. He's watching the feces. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the BEMs. Ah, that doesn't rhyme, but B is I something. It. I appreciate that. BG's doc is pretty good. I HBO. loved it. Yeah, talk about fun. talk about innovative. I mean, they're up here, then their their whole genre crashes, and then they find disco. They're the highest thing, and then they crash on that. It's it's pretty wild. Can I give you two points about that movie? Please, I live for these points. Okay, one. 
I've never seen a documentary move faster. Like mm-hmm. within, I, I paused. They were five minutes in. They were already on TV in the UK. They never discussed how they came up with the name BGs, which I assume is Barry Gibbs, BG. That was my but guess. But three. I know, but I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Like They didn't go yeah. into the name or like what their child was like, how they went to Australia. Like five minutes in, they were a successful band. Did you find that weird? Yeah, I think that's the attention span with these kooky youngsters or whatever that is. I completely agree. I want the I want the nitty gritty. I want all of it. Yeah, their parents hit them. They were born of this kind of heritage, whatever. Yeah, miscarriage, you name it. But still great. Here's my other point. Maybe I should save this for the Patreon because it's a little spicy. But Oh, boy. The one thing I hated in that movie, when they were talking about how disco sucks and everyone hates disco and they're blowing up the disco records. Remember that part? The DJ I know exactly what you're going to say. This guy, they have a guy go on and talk about how it's all racist. It was I racism know. and racism in this. But I'm like... The Bee Gees, first of all, when I think of disco, I don't think, I think of the Bee Gees. I don't think of that as black music. I think of black music. I think of Stevie Wonder. I think of, you know, uh, Otis Redding, Sam Cooke, uh, the blues, Chuck Berry. Like, I'm never, in my mind, maybe I'm wrong. I disco think it was me, a black and gay thing. They were big, it was big with the black and the gay because it was very dancey. Whereas the white group, the white guys are listening to rock and roll and, you know, hitting ladies and taking their shirt off and drinking a beer. It just didn't fit in the documentary, and they were like, they blew up all these disco records. It was about race. It was racism, and they were blowing up random rock and roll records. They were blowing up Marvin Gaye records, which I've never heard that before. But I'm like, the Bee Gees suffered the most. How could it be race? They literally showed the DJ being like, who fucking hates the Bee Gees? They yeah. were like, ah! That was weird. It was just this weird, like, five-minute racial thing put in. There was no other uh, sort of points of the moment or, or race or sexism it just felt so weird and i was like but they suffered the most there's no right. other act that suffered more we're like they had the backlash how is yeah. that racism they're white guys from australia speaking of shoehorn they they got that one in there didn't they it just felt like i was like this is out of left field literally they were in the outfield ah that's <laughs> angels. but he's like the whole thing was right ra- the whole anti-disco thing was fully racist it was all racism and uh, I just thought that was really strange. I'm like, the Bee Gees to me are like quintessentially the disco, Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and damn good soundtrack, by the way. Like, I, I'm not a disco guy. I don't want to do the dances, but you can't deny that's quality music. Oh, and I love that movie, too. It's one of my favorite movies. Oh, great movie. It's also fun to see Brooklyn back then and how much, how completely polar opposite it is. One of the great character introductions of all time of him walking with the paint cans and they sees the lady and just turns and runs after her. And yeah, I love that. Meatball and you want one or two today? Two. Give me two. Yeah. <laughs> great Fucking movie. Whops. He's amazing. And somebody commented on my movie pod that Travolta sucks. I'm like, you're out of your fucking mind. Travolta's amazing. He's unbelievably good, I think. I mean, he's a homosexual, but he's a triple threat. A triple threat. Sorry. It's uh, dancing, singing, and a good actor. That's rare. Fantastic. And handsome. Love him. Love Travolta. Anyways, just to wrap up. So finally, the the, the plumber comes. The the landlord comes. He kept ringing the doorbell, being like, we're working on it. But then the smell was so bad. It was coming up through. Like, we could smell it upstairs. The whole building stunk. And then, like, everyone else, all the other tenants are, like, poking their heads up. Being like, what's going on? And you feel like, it's not us. I swear to God. My shit's not in the shower. Don't worry. Keep moving. <laughs> just keep just just close the door and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> get yourself a cup of coffee, sister. But yeah, it's all all cleaned up, safe, safe and sound. Our our shower has never looked better, and uh, all all good. But man, I, I, I'm not a weak stomach guy. You know, I wow. love horror and drama. But man, seeing a bunch of fe- just thinking about, it, I could throw up right now, and I apologize to the squeamish fans. No, I, I mean, that's appalling. That's horrific. I'm so glad. You got a hell of a super. I could see a guy going, I'm not answering this one. You know, we had a, uh, you've seen my apartment. We're, we're paying a, a pretty penny over here, and I've never had this before. My old super, I never met him, never talked to him, never seen him. But this guy, we had a drip, and it was just dripping down. And I was like, well, let me tell the super. I, I don't care about a drip. I don't want to be high maintenance, but I'll just tell him. And he comes in, he looks at it, he goes, ah, oh, shit. The whole ceiling's got to come out. So they spent days with, like, this crew and contractors, and they took the whole ceiling out. They changed a bunch of pipes. It took forever. It had duvetine everywhere, and dust was coming out of there. And I was like, this is amazing that they just did this from a drip. My old guy would have been like, hey, you can't live with a drip, you wuss. Get out of here. 
I, I've had bad landlords and good landlords and good. This landlord is the best I've ever had. He's like the nicest guy ever. He's always here painting something and fixing yeah. something. Couldn't be nicer. Gave us a discount at the beginning of COVID. And there's nothing I'm more grateful for than how nice my apartment is, how nice my landlord is. Now, here's the big questione. Do you tip the guy at, at Christmas? A landlord? I've never even heard of that. Should I? A Fuck. super, a super. Well, there's no super. He just does the shit. Ah, the super is how he, we got that downstairs. There used to be one, and then uh-huh. he left, and we took that apartment. Oh, so there's no soup. No soup for you. Come back one year. <laughs> Forget it. Let it go. Interesting. <laughs> um, you ever hear that story? Uh, my favorite story ever. I probably told you a million times. It's not my story, but Colin Quinn, this is like 30 years ago. He lives in a building, and then the, the owner of the building comes and goes, Colin, do you think you could fix like a sink if you had to? And Colin's like, ah, I don't know, maybe, I guess. He's like, we need a super. Would you want to be the super <laughs> of the building? And Colin goes, Frank, I, I'm on Saturday Night Live. And he goes, no, I know. <laughs> like the guy, that's what people think of show business. The guy is fully aware that Colin is on Saturday Night Live. He's like, I know you're on Saturday Live. Do you want to be the super or not? Ah, oh, that's amazing. That's New York. That's, that keeps you humble. You know, it's crazy. And I know we got to go here, but uh, I was a porter at a building. Isn't that, looking back, I'm like, how did I even pull that off for two years? What's a porter again? I think it's a nice way of saying a super, but I did everything. Like, I remember a lady shit up the bathroom. Like, there was shit on the walls. I had to clean that. There was a possum stuck in the aviation or the, what do you call it, ventilation. I had to clean that out. I was hanging stuff. I was building things. I was in a freight elevator all day. I mean, I was at the boiler room d- turning wrenches. That's a good movie, Boiler Room. I liked it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, that's crazy. I mean, no offense to you. But when I think, hey, I need something fixed, I don't, I don't think I got to get Norman over here. I don't either. That's why I'm saying. I was on YouTube. I was Googling. Uh, what's a fuse box? How does this work? Yeah. I mean, if I need a, a, a zinger or a punchline or a roast joke, I'll, I'll give you a text. But um, if my shit is all over the shower, I wasn't like, should we call Mark? Or <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Uh, I don't want but- that call anyway. No, no, you don't. But uh, yeah, we got to wrap it up. I mean, we're over time here. I've I've said too much. I'm going to kill myself. But uh, great to see you. Happy New Year. You too. Good story. I'm glad your shower's in shit shape and uh, it's good talking shit. But uh, yeah, well, you got any dates coming? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't have much. I had one in February. That got canceled. I was supposed to go to Aruba in two weeks. That just got canceled. But I will be in Key West, Florida, uh, February, February valentine's day weekend whatever the fuck that is hold on let me see 14th is it uh 11 12 13 i'll be at key west key west comedy tom dustin's club i'll be down there and um love that that time i heard heard he's got a new room yeah new room he owns the play him and his our buddy joe they they bought it and got a whole thing going so i'm excited to go down there and then march I bet side splitters. I forget which weekend that is because I'm a bad businessman, but I think it's 11, 12, 13. And then I believe Skankfest is supposed to be 18, 19, is that right? 20, I think. That's in my book. Oh, my fucking book's right here. I believe so. That's what I have in my book, but I might be gay. I'm not sure. Is that Tejas? Yeah, I think so. I have it Skankfest 26, 27, 28. We'll see. Ooh-wee. And uh, yeah, March 18th to the 20th. That's side splitters. 18th to the 20th side splitters and then uh helium kansas city new Ooh. club i've never even been there never heard of it i never I heard think, of that one either <laughs> i think they're tricking me i think it's a joke oh boy you're gonna I'm show like, up the sprinklers are gonna hit you uh, it's like tommy d i'm gonna be like oh no and then get shot in the back of the tits <laughs> april 8th through the 10th helium kansas city uh hopefully all these gigs happen we'll see comics mohegan sun may 20th to the 22nd i know that's way out but and uh the youtube i'm putting up all these youtube videos Go uh, hit the YouTube, hit subscribe. A ton of you already have. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm doing this thing with uh, Ronan Hirschberg. We're doing a movie podcast, which you can get the audio on the Patreon, or you can watch it on YouTube. People like to watch things. I don't get it, but it's on they YouTube. They want to see you. Or the audio is on the Patreon. Join the Patreon and uh, get some merch, and that's it for me. I hate myself. Uh, we all love you there, Fatty. Those are uh, the people. People are raving about the Vincent Vega thing. That was a hit. I was not expecting that. People keep sharing. It's nice. We're doing another one soon. So 
Yeah, thanks to everyone for sharing it. Go check it out on the YouTube. Yes, check out the YouTube. Check out our both our specials on YouTube. Check out the merch. I see uh, a lot of people in uh, Florida had a bunch of lunch teas, and they were great. I'm at uh, Tempe Improv this weekend. Then uh, OKC at Bricktown Comedy Club, whatever the hell that is. Funny Bone in Des Moines. I'm all over the road. Laugh, stop, laugh Shop in Calgary. Uh, back in Texas, Good Nights in Raleigh. Brea Improv. So we got a ton of stuff on the books. Let's hope this goddamn pandemic comes to a screeching halt that we can get back to our fucking lives for once. And uh, vaccine it up. Lick your tits. Cut off your clit. Praise Allah. George is saying cut it. <clears throat>